Please help support the channel by visiting our Amazon store for such products like the Zoom H1 Portable Digital Recorder. Affiliate link below. Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. And last year, after the release of Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, Warner Brothers DC Films division went through a major shakeup. Zack Snyder was effectively clipped from being the mastermind of it all. Jeff Johns was moved in as a way to kind of bridge the gap between the, the comic side and the film side by putting a, a comics guy in charge. They thought they'd be able to actually get more comics like films off the uh, uh at the gate so to speak and when it came to justice league ben affleck was uh, upped to exec producer and was going to oversee the edit of the film it almost feels like none of those things happened because justice league was almost a wholly different movie than what was originally shot for better or for worse hell at this point we will we will never know unless Zack Snyder does a tell-all about what his vision was and what could have been. And as a fan, a very big fan of Batman v Superman's extended cut, uh, as well as Man of Steel, I really wanted to see the conclusion of that particular trilogy of films. Unfortunately, what we got was different is the best way to describe it. Um, but that being said, Warners is very much trying to, uh, well mix things up again and they've brought in another franchise builder by the name of Walter Hamada who uh, was working over at New Line before coming over now to take over DC Films production. Jeff Johns is out. I'm sure Ben Affleck is still very much teetering that line uh, even though recently he said that he is considering directing a Batman movie but uh, you know that, that's that's likely to change depending on what type of alcohol he's drinking that day. And if that seems cynical of me to say, it's because I'm sick and tired of that back and forth. And so if it's a case or if it's all based around him being an alcoholic, I'm just going to call it out because it's annoying. And as a fan of the franchise, I am just tired of this back and forth. Will they, won't they, will they, won't they just cast John Hamm and be done with it. I think that's the next realistic step, to be honest with you. But the reason why this is interesting and the reason why this is actually a good move, in my opinion, is because the biggest problem facing uh, the DC production slate right now is the lack of foresight, the lack of connectivity. Uh, you look at Man of Steel 2013, one of the best films of that year, in my opinion, uh, you set the tone for this particular DCEU. But then it wasn't in, in, until nearly three years later that we got Batman v Superman and then we got Suicide Squad. And those movies did very, very well theatrically, but were lambasted critically. But they also never really built, they didn't do as well to build to a larger world. Uh, they tried, and I would say they did so m with moderate success, but nowhere near as well as Marvel. Because Marvel, coming into their 18th movie with Black Panther uh, next month, um, and well, hell, by the time they hit 10 years come May, they're going to have 19 films under their belt. They've established the world and they've done it very well dc just really tried to ram it in there because they were just trying desperately to play catch up and this is where they find themselves right now with with uh, a floundering franchise in terms of justice league suicide squad having done well and we know a sequel's happening but uh what's going to go on with that we still have no idea uh you've got gotham city sirens but that's still kind of not being pushed through even though something like that should be joss whedon's batgirl still hasn't been touched uh, really touched upon just yet as well as uh, Chris McKay's Nightwing. Uh, and you got Shazam, which I think they're, they're, they're forcing or they're really kind of rushing Shazam through. Uh, and I think David, David F. Sandberg will do pretty good with that one. He's having lots of fun on Twitter. But then again, him having fun on Twitter does, does two things for me. One, it's, it, it, I can look at it and see what they're doing. They're trying to keep the social media presence high. Uh, that way, very much making it uh, appear to the public that everything is hunky dory everything's a-okay whereas at the same time i'm like shouldn't you be working on the movie dude why do why, why, why you gotta be on twitter all the time david f sandberg you got a movie to make man that stuff takes time uh get an assistant run that shit. anyway this thing walter hamada coming in uh because it's a guy i've never heard of before but but here here's the thing he worked with new line he also was one of the producers uh, uh on it helped usher it into the success that it had Right. I mean, we're talking, uh, you know, a September R rated horror film release that went on to be for one critically acclaimed and two make a buttload of money. And so we know that uh, he's got that under his belt. But not only that, and this is where it talks about I want to bring up the world building here. 
He was also an exec producer, and he's good friends with James Wan, who started The Conjuring franchise. Now, you might think to yourself, The Conjuring franchise, what the hell does that have to do with the price of tea in China when, when, when looking at the DCEU? Well, here's the thing with that, is The Conjuring franchise just recently, with the release of Annabelle 2, crossed over into the billion dollar mark. That's how much money that franchise over the course of four low budget films has pulled in over a billion dollars and they're planning on the nun and a few other movies to keep that franchise afloat so here's a guy who worked on horror films but has very much been able to help usher them in to for one a billion dollar franchise and two a very successful very beloved remake or adaptation of a Stephen King novel, something that Sony, with all of its money, with all of its might, with all of its power, couldn't do with The Dark Tower, simply because they were trying to create a franchise. Uh, you know, they, they were trying to run before they could crawl, essentially. And that was one of the biggest problems with it. They were also, well, the PG-13 adaptation, whereas The Conjuring films are rated R. It is rated R. You see what I'm saying here? They've been able to kind of hit that gritty side of it. Uh, and be able to be successful. Now, I'm not saying that that uh, the DCEU at this point is going to start dropping hard F bombs and going into R-rated territory. Clearly not. But what we have here is a guy in charge of it who might have a vision for one. I have no idea. He's definitely, you know, he's going to be compared at this point now to a Kevin Feige, especially if his films under his under his purview actually get successful, you know. Um, and as a result of uh, you know, this, he also knows how to build the universe. And that is precisely what needs to happen now. That has been precisely the problem with the DCEU is how it's tried to build the universe has not been very successful in terms of trying to rush it. Now, if he can sit there, pull it back a little bit, scale it back, focus on some smaller characters, build up some smaller movies, which is essentially what it looks like they're doing. Bring in directors that are able to work with a lower budget, which David F. Sandberg's lights out with a five million dollar feature. Joss Whedon on um, on, you know, what was it? Both. Uh, uh, well, Serenity was 30 million dollars. And granted, the, the both Avengers movies had ho much higher budgets, but he can work within both a, a low budget range and a high budget range and get him something medium budget, you know, 60, 70 million dollars on Batgirl and he could tell a story like that and be successful. Chris McKay coming off of doing the Lego Batman movie, he could probably craft something that is of a more minimal budget. Uh, and that's essentially what I think is going to save the DCEU at this point. It's not $300 million movies like Justice League because that was a problem. It was too big, it was too crazy. But focusing on these smaller character stories, giving them lower budgets, but cranking more of them out with critically acclaimed directors who will probably have a very good chance at making these successes will be what the DCEU needs to do in order to get back to where they want to be, get back on track with that. Now you have a guy who's good at world building with low budget films that are able to hit high marks. I'm speculating right now, absolutely speculating. I don't know for certain, but I'm, I'm my gut's telling me that this is a right call, that this is a right choice because of what this guy was able to do with the other franchises he's been given, uh, especially over at New Line. And uh, we'll have to wait and see because clearly bringing in Jeff Johns didn't work out the way that they uh, that they thought it would. And I'm, I'm, I'm surprised at that as well. I mean, but then again, when Jeff Johns came in, he only has three films under his belt. You, you had Wonder Woman, which was already, you know, in the process of production. So and it was still following the Zack Snyder tone at the time uh, under Patty Jenkins. She did a lot with it. You know, you had uh, Suicide Squad, which was already shot in the canon and post-production by the time it released. And then you had Justice League, which went through extensive reshoots after Zack Snyder's daughter had that unfortunate tragedy. And, and then Joss Whedon came in. And so I, I don't think either Jeff Johns couldn't handle it very well or they just looked at this and said, you're the top guy. You got to get out of here because these have clearly not done what we want. Even though I feel like the the powers that be, the executives with all the notes are actually more of the problem than anything else. But I'm curious to know your guys' thoughts about this. Am I wrong in my, my assumption that, uh, that this new guy is going to be able to really kind of wrangle in the DCEU and make it more of a kind of a uh, of a go-to franchise due to how he's been able to do it with the conjuring or do you think that warner should just really pack it up because they have they've clearly made some huge mistakes and uh, they don't seem to be learning by putting someone who does horror into the space of someone who should be handling comic books i am curious to know your thoughts let me know 
Uh, if you haven't already, please thumbs up the video, subscribe to the channel, check back often for more content from me. My name is, of course, Matt Jarbo, and if you um, want to see more videos, you can do so right now.